Joining us now is the chairman of that committee, New Jersey Democrat Robert Menendez. Thank you very much, Senator, for joining us. Appreciate it. Good morning. Uh, first, let's deal with uh, how we believe this is being conducted among members uh, of the Senate. Do you think that what you're dealing with is just the raw questions of whether or not this is the right move and how you make it the right move, or are partisan politics uh, starting to show up here, Democrats backing the president, Republicans being reluctant to do so? What's your take? Well, Chris, my sense of it is that we're moving towards a bipartisan effort. The resolution that we will consider uh, is a bipartisan product. Uh, Senator Corker, the ranking Republican the co on the committee, and myself, uh, along with input from members on both sides, have drafted a resolution that we think is tailored, specific, uh, meets the, the needs of the president to respond to Assad's uh, crimes, but ultimately also doesn't permit American troops on the ground and has a 60-day time frame and so I think we have struck the balance here in terms of the competing views that we heard on the committee which is probably reflective of colleagues in the Senate so I look at this as uh, what I hope will be a bipartisan process uh, 60 days uh, plus a provisional 30 uh, how do you reconcile that with limited in scope and duration that's a long time two months well, actually, under the War Powers Act, the president could have conducted an action unilaterally without congressional approval. And if that action exceeded 60 days, then he would have had to come to Congress. So it seems to us that trying to limit the president to greater than what the statutory authority already provides him uh, would, have been, would have been wrong. And the 30-day extension, uh, which he would have to certify as necessary, is subject to a vote of congressional approval if the Congress believes it should not be extended for 30 days. So we're basically giving him what exists under the War Powers Act. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. Now, a big part of the rationale for going into Syria uh, from lawmakers like yourself is the humanitarian aspect, what we're seeing on the ground, the needs of the refugees and the innocent. What are you putting into this resolution that addresses that? Is this all about the military or is there also going to be aid included in this strategy? Well, in the resolution, we speak about a broader Syria strategy, uh, that we want the administration within 30 days of passage of the resolution to send us a broad Syria strategy. That includes the military equation. It includes whatever other diplomatic uh, efforts are going to be made. You heard uh, Secretary Kerry yesterday talk about a negotiated uh, process, which he calls Geneva II, mm -hmm. where the Russians originally were in agreement. It also talks uh, about how uh, we deal with with uh, elements of the humanitarian tragedy. But at, uh, at the conclusion of this is really about the national security of the United States. And I think that case was made very vividly yesterday in terms of what not only happens in Syria, but the global message we send as it regards to violations of the use of chemical weapons and what the, how that message is received in places like Iran, North Korea, and elsewhere. Senator, help me with the timing here. Uh, the United States is planning to get out ahead of the U.N. here. The phrase slam dunk is being used once again in terms of our development of intelligence. Is there concern that because of the distrust that exists around the world with regard to how we got into the Iraq war and what, we, what the U.S. said about intelligence there, that maybe you should wait, the United States. Maybe you should wait, you lawmakers, until the U.N. and the international community has come to the same conclusions you have. Well, Chris, uh, first of all, I voted against the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. so I understand those concerns. But the intelligence here is clearly far more defined and uh, a high degree of confidence in it. And it has been declassified to a very large degree so that the American people and the world understand the backup for this. The French and the Germans have come to similar conclusions in their own intelligence reports. Uh, and the question of the United Nations, we have tried to go to the UN even to get a condemnation of the use of chemical weapons, not even saying it was Assad and the Russians opposed even that simple uh, recognition that the world recognizes that there was the use of chemical weapons. So uh, we have tried the UN. Unfortunately, uh, the patrons of Assad have used their ability for their veto at the Security Council to deny a multilateral effort in this regard. And so that's why we have been proceeding as we are. You know that the American people, when polled right now, are below 50 percent on approving uh, taking military action in Syria. Can you look into the collective face of your constituents in America and say, this is the right thing to do, this will work out well 
for America if we commit to an attack on Syria? I take this obligation, as do members of the committee and I'm sure members of the Senate, very seriously. As I said, I voted against the war in Iraq when the vote for the war was popular. I voted against it. I have voted and advocated a quicker withdrawal in Afghanistan. I believe that in this instance, not only is the punishment for the use of weapons of mass destruction uh, uh, via chemical weapons in violation of international law and needs a targeted military response, but also we send a message to the Ayatollah in Iran, do not march towards those nuclear weapons you're trying to acquire. We send a message to the dictator of North Korea. We are serious about protecting South Korea and the Korean Peninsula, uh, and we send message to global actors. That is in our national security. That will ultimately make us safer. That will be a deterrent, and I think that's why this is essential to do. Our Senator Menendez, thank you for your perspective this morning. We know you expect a vote in short order. Look forward to checking in with you again. Thank you.